Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate forum which you should definitely all join. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Now, speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of the people who support me on Patreon. I tried to do this the other day on the Bullbusters pre-show, but I just couldn't muster the uh, the energy. So, shout out to Alistair, BG Flat, Billy Highvolt. Uh, burn fat till my stomach is as flat as the earth. Chow Young Cat. Dank. David Wayne Foster. Edwin Johnson. Felix Hung. Fireball X. God Rockin'. Jeronism. Kirsten Smith. Life is Short. Matt. Michael. Paige Love. Qatar Craig. Reinhardt. Rene. Sam Hine. Sweet Equity. Texas Mike. TheFlatEarthChannel.com and Tina Baker. So big massive shout out to all of you. I've got quite a few people in both Discord and Google Plus Hangouts on air, so I'll raise the mic on both and hopefully we'll get some conversation before the live sh show starts in about 25 minutes time. Good or afternoon. Hello, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> Good, Good morning. <laughs> it's time delay. <laughs> Nice weekend. Yes, yes. Uh, I was praying for you to get better. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, but you know what? You sick uh, single-handedly took those guys down, and they thought they had an advantage when you weren't feeling good. Uh, all of a sudden, they saw a surge of energy in you in that show. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, get it to you. <laughs> yeah. I can still argue, even if I'm ill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, they they had nothing. Trust me, it was funny. Um, just just takes more force. There we go. Contained all within the human body, that force. Yes, I was just sharing uh, with Flatsoid and uh, Righteous that at the QE show, I was in the chat as eleventh man, just as a favor to uh, QE because he always digs in me on tenth man. So I came on as eleventh man. We had a little fun with it. Uh, but this guy was replying to something I posted about uh, the sun, the, the part that QE talked about, the further you get away from the sun, they say it gets hotter, uh, but or you're right next to it, you won't combust. You know, that, that little dig we had on them? Yeah, you, you back away so, from, the, from the bonfire five feet because it's a bit hot, and then you go back another 20 feet and suddenly you burst into flames because it's so much hotter. It makes no sense. Yes. Yes, exactly. So I, I posted on the chat. It's just, I mean, I could post it in Master Beer. I could just read it. It's just so short. I'll just read it. It says, uh, so this is me. So it's hotter the further you get from the sun, and they call this trustworthy science. And the, this, this fellow replied, incorrect. It's hotter you get from the center, which is only a second law of thermodynamics violation, if you assume Heat radiates exclusively from the core. So then I replied, this guy, who's been there to test these statements of pseudoscience at all? Them are some serious frequent flyer reward miles. And then he responds, <laughs> <laughs> and then he responds, 11th man, it's a fallacy to assume the only way to measure a temperature profile is to walk along with a the thermometer. Then of course I respond, no, it's a fallacy to assume the stated outer space model can't have gas pressure without a container. But if you know what is happening 93 million miles away, well, heck, who am I to argue? So I thought that was going to be the end of it. And then he replies, 11th man, gas pressure is a definition from kinetic theory, which already assumes a container. Atmospheric pressure is not subject 
to that assumption and only requires a force to be held to the earth. And this is how it ends. So this is me responding. Look, how far have we moved from the sun and on and on we can go. Show me earth-based Coriolis causes. And this guy responds, 11th man, we see Coriolis in pendulums, planes, bullets, hurricanes. What's the issue with that? And I say, Nick, so you're saying the earth spins underneath the airplane? And I haven't heard from him since. I wonder why. But he says right there, Coriolis, what's the problem? It spins under pendulums, planes, bullets, and hurricanes. And then I just feed it back to him, his own garbage, that he finally, instead of robotically said, oops, did I just say something? He finally caught on what he was saying. Oh, I got to prove the earth is spinning under a plane now. Oh, my gosh. What did I do? It's amazing. It got him to stop. Usually well, with keyboard it, wires, they keep going. Well, that's why on the third to the last comment, I said, and on and on we can go. And then I just asked that question about Earth-based Coriolis causes. And he answered it wrongly. From their point of view, he said planes. They never say planes. Or they quote yeah. out. Yeah, they don't say planes. Now they also don't say bullets. It's like down to hurricanes. Oh, a bunch of wind at the end of the day. Yep, it's all just hodgepodge. Well, I like the way Nathan describes a non-inertial and an inertial reference frame. And when I looked it up in all the citations that I can find, they all say the same thing. You got to have two reference frames. And if you have two reference frames and you see a, a, a difference in movement, what does that tell you? It tells you the Earth's not rotating because there is no second non-inertial reference frame spinning underneath the plane, the bullet, the aeroplane, that is. Um, or anything else for that matter. You don't have two reference frames on Earth, therefore you don't have a spinning ball Earth. Precisely. But it's nice to yep. get them to but it's nice to get them to say it has to be two. <laughs> you just take them down this merry road of uh, non examples. Example well it's a non force force. Now we got non example examples. Yeah, you have to get them back to fundamentals. Oh, they're dead with that one. Gas pressure and Coriolis are like the last. The, I just love those two. I'm all set now. Got everything set up the way I like it. Oh, the shelf's not going to fall on you with the projector now? Oh, it did exactly the same thing. I think the brackets bent. So I took off the entire shelf because it was looking like it was a couple of millimeters away at the top half of one bracket. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to risk a projector. So I took it all down, filled in the holes, re-drilled it, re-raw plugged it, put it back up, got everything together. And I was like, great, great. And then went back to it and had a look. And I'm like, hang on, it's still two millimeters away on that same exact <laughs> bracket after doing all of that work and painting it. I was like, hmm, have I just wasted a weekend? Yes, I think I have. So another but, show with entropy. Uh, I don't know, it's either a wonky bracket or a wonky wall, one or the other. But every time I do it, I get it flush, twist that last millimeter, and it just pulls the raw plug out of the wall. But as it's up. They're not compatible. Well, I had another projector strapped to one bracket over the weekend, and I thought to myself, well, if the one bracket can take all of the weight of one projector, then both brackets, even if one raw plug's slightly dodgy, should be fine. That's my logic. So it was it a no I've, hypothesis? I've yanked on both brackets, <laughs> and both, are, both seem secure, so... And they, it seems absolutely fine. It's just going to stay as it is now. <laughs> I can't be asked to spend more time on it. But what I meant by that wasn't actually the shelf. It was actually the net result of getting the shelf up and getting the projector working again. You know, I've got all, I've got my live dashboard, my live chat with super chats, my Discord server, my 
voice me to banana, my Skype, my Hangouts, my live chat for the live audience, my um, little video that runs with background stills, like Moon is on now, my Discord, uh, not Discord, my OBS, my uh, hotkeys, and what else have I got? Battlefield. Uh, Patreon and live dashboard on the second screen. So all of those things are visible all at once, which is great. And no Battlefield. I don't play video games. <laughs> well, uh, Flatjoid put a video up, so it's his own. You can play it later in the live show uh, of him taking all the water out of an air compressor and the air compressor still has pressure. So Spurs said that uh, on Friday's show that uh, if you can take all the water out and there's still pressure, he'll give up this argument once and for all. So we'll see if he does that. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'm, I'm done with that argument, to be honest. It's been an entire well, month. That's, That's why good... I finally made it here. Well, okay, like I said I earlier... What, what succinctly is his argument? His argument is that there is no pressure at sea level. Essentially, what, what we would refer to as 14.7 PSI at sea level, he would call zero. Yeah, I've heard you guys talking about it. It should be... Com- it really can't define his argument stupid you got argument. a bad con- you got a bad connection there P. Meisty we should get the Spurs a GoFundMe on a plane with a thermometer see if his ears pops with the temperature not changing well that was his first that was his first uh, entree to the debate when he said you know the pilots uh Oh, they're fit and they don't have ears pop. So when I went but to you, check that, when I went to check that out, uh, all the pilots, if you if you type in, I mean, there's all these YouTube state uh, channels with pilots giving advice of how to handle ear popping. I mean, these are pilots giving you advice on how to handle ear popping. They go, yeah, I have it too. I have to yawn, I have to hold my nose and blow slowly, chew bubble gum. Chew bubble gum. Yeah, all and the pilots are saying this, and here Spurs is saying that. They've trained themselves and they don't have ear popping. When they admit on the video that to this day they still have their ear popping. I mean, what nonsense! Yeah, is I'm this? I'm a pilot and I have my ear pops. I have my ear pops. Yeah, I'm I'm a farmer and I have my ear pops. <laughs> True. I mean, it's it's such a silly argument because number one, uh, athletes who train for a specific uh, discipline can handle that wearing out of that discipline better than those that don't train. For example, uh, a marathon runner will last longer than someone who doesn't train for a marathon. So pilots acclimate as well to always going up and down, going up and down. And but they get, and they get, the pilot even said he, he's gotten used to it because he does it so often. But he doesn't say it goes away. <laughs> yeah, it becomes no, second nature. think about it. Exactly. I remember, I, I remember, I fell asleep during a, a landing, and the pain in my ear is what woke me up. And then I had like an earache for a whole day. Yeah, that'll get you. Because you're supposed to constantly swallow to equalize. Yeah, I I do it often here. I'm at 2,400 feet on my farm, and I feel pressure differential or whatever I'm feeling. I just plug my nose and slowly blow out and I equalize. It's just so obvious. Where's your farm at, Tim, or Redman, if I can ask? It's in uh, Southern California, about an hour, 15 minutes from the coast. Oh, nice. Must be beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's a a wonderful place. Uh, I've got water rights and a really good well and you know, you need that in California. You just need a borehole now. <laughs> a what? Say so you just need a borehole now. Borehole? What do you mean? 
Saturday, the borehole. Saturday, I'm trying to see the bore. Oh, that's <laughs> All right, now I'm laughing because I remember laughing at it, but I can't recall it. So remind me. You said I was cooling down in the borehole. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh my gosh, Saturday was a fun show. Uh, Huey had a good show Saturday. Oh. I have a little change oh, of topic. Have you guys ever ha thought of having like a flat earth globe yelling at each other? Actually sit down and talk and have a good uh, You were cutting out a bit. Yeah, I heard nothing. Sorry, have you guys ever thought of having a flat earth globe meetup where people aren't yelling at each other? Like you sit down and talk. Yeah, we can't really make out what you're saying. Is there any way of making yourself louder? I, I think he's trying That's, to say... We can hear him. He's just cutting out. Maybe yeah, he's got but, automatic input sensitivity turned on or something. But I, th I think he's trying to ask if we ever get to get together with Globers and Planet Earthers to actually discuss things without fighting. No, it's not possible. You point out that they're... G reification or their R reification is in place and they immediately lose the plot and start talking over you. Okay, yeah, we'll just bring baseball bats with that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the ad homs when they start losing the argument and uh, you attack the person rather than the argument and that's where it starts derailing. And that goes both ways, of course, but it's usually the ad homs. Yeah, the tantrums don't stop. Hey, I don't care if the earth I I don't care if the earth is round and spinning. It just isn't. That's the whole point. I it, just show it to me. But it can't yeah, show but, it to me. But but you keep lying about it, that's the problem. Yeah, if we just have the evidence for it, we wouldn't be here. What's the point? I mean, I accept truth. Show me truth. Uh if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I, it's, it's it's I mean I've been wrong on so many things in my life that it's not uh, going to be a big deal if I'm wrong about one more thing. Just show it. Quit lying about it. I guess he took off. No, maybe he's maybe. fixing his mic. Yeah. Uh, or oh, maybe he's struggling with signal. No, I think the mic accelerated away with his coffee cup. Oh, that's him. <laughs> yeah, that's him. <laughs> that was a great show. Chocolate was fun on that one. I mean, who would, who would think in 2019 you're talking about accelerating coffee cups? I think anything is possible these days. I like the race <laughs> Anon had with the coffee cups in the car. <laughs> yeah that was fun too i'll tell you the friday shows get loose and wild but they but they're fun okay rc is back try talking again oh wait gotta unmute him all right go ahead You guys are looking at different screens. I just see Nathan's screen. Yeah, Righteous I got the is... Discord up. I want to try the it. Discord. Thank you, Righteous. So, Nathan, on your screen, is those your own photos? These are, yeah. I mean, there's some that are rantees and... Did he get his uh, drone yeah, we're going to add some more. <laughs> Maybe. I might do. I've got two now. I've got two backdrops that run. One's just Ranty's, like, scenic views from a holiday he took. But he, you know, went to the effort of setting up the camera and taking maybe five or ten minutes video of a river and mountain and various other things. Um, but I just flicked between the two. But Has, I hadn't intended to, no, because it's useful because a lot of it's sort of flat earth proof. 
um, and you'll have somebody point something out that doesn't conform with their sphere reification and then normally there's a photo that will follow within a minute there you go clock tower at Barrow and Finesse useful to have it just flash up why bother going that was my thinking why bother having to go to a file and dig it out every time you want to make an example because normally it's in the heat of a, an argument and you just want it there on screen when you're making the example oh I thought that was a happy accident didn't know you planned for it Oh, no, not at all. I mean, I absolutely intended to have these very heavily discussed images flashing up. I like the fact that a lot of people forget what they are. I'm sure we've had this conversation before, you and I actually, Rauch's Force. But, yeah, people forget because they haven't watched this debate or the Isle of Man debate. And they don't have, you know, they just look like pictures of boats and a town behind. No one's going to give it much attention until until you argue about it and point out the significance. So the specs on this picture, is this the one where he was one feet off the sea level with his camera, one foot off? I couldn't tell you. I, I don't know. But I know he has achieved this same image one foot off the ground. We've, we've seen that, but I don't know if this specific one was. I liked it because it's got a boat for proportions more than the height that he took sure. the observation. I think John refers to it, the 18 mile picture. That's the one foot one. Well, they're all the same distance. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. He's been an inch off the ground and had the same image, right? I mean, it was all fuzzy, but you could still see the buildings from an inch off the water. Like at one point, he lifted the camera, points it back, and then the water fills the hole. He just luckily took the camera out moments before the water actually filled the hole that he dug to put the camera in to get it an inch above the above the water. But yeah, the one yeah. foot observations is as clear as any of the others, as far as I'm concerned. So you know, yeah, that's probably the one I'd probably say it was, even though I don't really know which it is. Because <laughs> why, you know, you can easily reference it. And he keeps going back, you know, for anyone who's subscribed to Ranty Flat Earth, they see him going back to Barrow and Finesse re reasonably frequently. Is he going to, has he got a, his drone yet? And is he going to do the same thing with the drone? Same? Yeah, as far as I know, he just doesn't, I mean, and I don't blame him. When, when Sandra got the same drone, because Ranty and Sandra live in a similar area and make similar observations, she went out and got all the sort of the glamour shots that you get with the drone. And he's like, well, I don't want to replicate that. So he's just going to use them for specific observations that he's making. So when it's a tool rather than a you know, a nice means of just producing nice sunset footage, which has been done. There's nothing wrong with that and it's very useful. But other people have done it and he's got more specific sort of tasks for it in mind when he's making observations. I couldn't tell you what. You'd have to ask him. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, Yeah, he's got a point to prove. I'm reminded of uh, the show where Don came and you were sick and he was, I think it was Friday show. And I asked him, what are the reasons you believe in the globe earth? And he said, a hard sunset over uh, uh, horizon and Southern stars. And so I, I tried to dig a little bit there and, he says, it doesn't matter. He basically said, it doesn't matter if you disprove these two points. I'm still not going to change. And it, it reminded me of the talk. It, it reminded me of the talk we had with him where it was obvious that he needs authority figures like CNN or NASA or something like that to tell him. He won't just use his mind and decipher if someone is hoodwinking or lying to him and no evidence instead of looking at evidence he wants propaganda to tell him i guess is what i'm saying so the telly's got to tell him yeah yeah so it's just useless to argue with don anymore because he he gave us the two things that keep him as a glober and then when i went on to the sunsets and the horizon and Nathan reminded them that the atmosphere does not touch uh, the sky, isn't actually touching the ocean the way he thinks. It's just perspective. Uh, and obviously, when you see a street with a bunch of lights, they get smaller. It's called the vanishing point, a set of railroad tracks. We've all seen this. And that's what's happening. And it, if you go up, the horizon comes to your eye level. You go up to a mountaintop, airplane, high altitude balloon, the horizon keeps rising. So 
Grantee's drone, as it goes up, it should have a better view of the falling away of a ball earth as it falls away from you, just like the mountain, the airplane, and the high altitude balloon would show that the earth is curved and it's falling away, but it never does. And only on a plane would the horizon keep catching up to your eye level or the eye level of a camera lens. He, he doesn't want to look at that evidence and say, wow, you're right. The higher I go, I should see the fall of a curve, but I don't. Yeah, he just chooses to believe. That's all. It's just optics and perspective. I remember someone showing the airplane taking off. It was Rodrigo's channel and the wings of the airplane because of the distance uh, went into like a gull wing doors is like, like X wings. And obviously the wings didn't change. Hey chocolate. Hey chocolate. Good morning, guys. You got that leash on your coffee cup? Nah, <laughs> my, my coffee escaped me. I couldn't. I couldn't catch up to it. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a loss. <laughs> Damn, accelerating coffees. <laughs> you got some caffeine in that thing, man. Right, man, can I offer a perspective? Like, as a Glover myself, I, I'm i really willing to listen to flat earth arguments. That's why I continue to listen to the podcast, because I think they're really interesting. But, like, saying things like optics and perspective, to somebody who, like, just knows a little bit about physics, they, they, it just does they're not strong enough arguments but to really, ours is. Like, help people convince us to stand on something. Let me get it right. Optics and perspective is not a strong argument, but assuming your outcome with an R value is. No, you don't have to assume an outcome. You just simply have to say something more specific than optics and perspective. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Optics and perspective is describing things disappearing to a vanishing point. It came along with a description. Your worldview is based on a presupposition of an R value. It's there and you're begging the question proof of nothing. Perspective hijacking curve calculator. It's an assumption. No, no, Every, no. I hadn't quite no, finished. Not, See, not when the guy like asked that. earlier about us not arguing, I pointed out, I think it was you, to you. The same guy. Same guy, yeah. That We start pointing out that you have a presupposition of an R value and you start talking over me. I was in the middle of a sentence pointing out that you assume an R value and it's there in the calculator and every single sphere claim to be proof, not proof, claim to be proof will always come with an assumption of that R value. And before I finish making that statement, you wonder, do you, sir, why we don't have cordial conversations when you're interrupting this absolute statement of fact that demolishes your sphere religion? You wonder why we don't have cordial conversations? It's because you get triggered and you talk over the person pointing out your religion of R. No, I'm I'm not triggered and I'm not upset. Well, don't I'm talk over me then. I'm not making a supposition. I'm just asking for more specificity than optics and the words optics yeah. and perspective. Yeah, your worldview is entirely irrelevant because it's based on a presupposition of an R value that you've got absolutely no evidence for. And it's used and abused in every single claim to be proof of a sphere Earth. Without any sphere Earth, what are you left with? Well, you're left with the obvious and observable nature that you are dealing with in a day-to-day -day reality that you are actually part of. That's a flat Earth. That's what you're left with. There is no false dichotomy anymore on this show because there is no globe Earth. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. 
I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate Forum which you should definitely all join. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you are new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Tenth Man, Chocolate Sane, Righteous Force, Flatzoid, and Sleeping Warrior, also Arwin in the Google Plus Hangouts. How are you doing? One and all. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Hey, Good hey, afternoon. hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Also got a fair few people in Discord. Hello to all of you in Discord. Hello. 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 Any signs of Earth curvature? Uh, nope. 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 Not from any vantage point. Discord server. Any any remarks? Any any signs of Earth curvature? Yeah, uh, nope. the consumment. None whatsoever. The things disappearing from the bottom up. <clears throat> oh God! It proves so much. Any signs of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? I'm afraid not. No. Yeah, no. we can nope. measure it Nothing here, sorry. Yeah. What, Pimeisty? Hmm. Owen Benjamin think, did a yeah, good piece can, on that we yesterday. We can measure axial rotation in a couple of ways. Or at least seven. Oh, let's see. Owen, do, oh, hold on, hold on, do you, you have a question, Owen right? Benjamin? Hold on, hold on. You say we can measure axial rotation how, sorry? I said you, we can observe it and measure it in a few different ways. Yeah, yeah I heard the claim. Do you want to expand on that? Yep. Sure. Um, so I want to put three things. For, oh, we can even just do two. Um, but they have to go together, so give me one minute to say what each of them are. Uh, number one, if you, the farther you go from the North Pole, the um, lighter things get with the same mass that you measure. And then two, if you... Hold on, just one at a time. Sorry. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, no, 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 we just I, need I one claim at a time. Hold on, <laughs> one <laughs> claim at a time. I don't want a scattergun of five different claims. So you say no, moving. No, no, hold, from... hold up, No, I, I just wanted to name two. The last one is if you put a. Um... No, we'll deal with one at a time. Are you deaf? So you claim that moving from the North Pole with a weight proves Earth spins. Please elaborate. No, it's it's no. I didn't say it proved or spins. I said that it is. We're asking for proof of axial rotation. Are you dumb or deaf? No, you asked for evidence of it. Yeah, you stupid, dumb, deaf moron. So, you claim, having been asked for evidence of axial rotation, that you move from the North Pole with a weight and it changes. Can now expand on that and explain how it. You see, the before the show, you asked why we get triggered. Or we don't have cordial no, they, conversations. They, 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 all, I, and I, you I, are now convoy, talking over the out. top of me. Like you are talking over the top of me. So, Nathan, you, you are still talking, talking over, over the top of me because I am like yet to finish. Old, right, I'm going to give you one more chance, you stupid triggered fundy twat. And then I'm going to kick you out. While I talk, you don't. So, we've had a claim in response to the question regarding axial rotation you have made a claim that you move from the north pole and things change weight now i want you to expand on that and how it proves we spin because if there were spin you would experience centrifugal force 
centrifugal force would give way to different weights at different latitudes, which you can measure from the center point, which would be the North Pole. Sorry, you didn't explain how it proves we spin. Yes, centrifugal force is the way that it shows... Your mic is absolutely awful. I can, I can hardly make out a single word that you say. My apologies. He said, if the Earth spins, it creates centrifugal force. So he's back into no. begging the question. No, no, no. So, I yeah, said, how is that registered spins, then? We would be able to see that in centrifugal force. I didn't say it proves centrifugal force. That would be a logical fallacy. I said we would be able to see it. And then I say we do see that. That's simply an observation. That's how the scientific method works. You may not be <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. So this is an adherence. <laughs> Wait, shoot yourself in okay. The He's just claimed it's an adherence to the scientific method. Okay. So what's the independent and dependent variable for the hypothesis? Oh, hey, hey, Nathan. Nathan, we're not going to... Not hey, Nathan. Listen up, Dumbo. I'm asking a very specific question, which I'm not going to allow you to obfuscate by talking over me indefinitely. So I'll make it absolutely and abundantly clear what I'm asking for, given that you've just said that's what you do in the scientific method. The scientific method has a very specific process attached to it. And I'm asking for two details that would make this relevant to the scientific method. Number one, the you independent. Specific details, He's talking over me again, isn't he? Number no, one, and there he goes again, talking over me again. Number one, I would like the independent variable, presumed cause of the effect, and I would like the dependent variable, claimed natural phenomena, please. No thanks, Nathan, because... What do you mean, no thanks? Yeah, you are a fundy zealot. You've just made up a load of crap with a formal logical fallacy known as affirming the consequent. And after doing so, you've declared that you've got science adherence. You haven't. And when asked for the validity that you may even have a semblance of scientific validity in your bullshit that you claim, you say no thank you. Who is straw man? And talks all over me indefinitely while I point out that he hasn't got any scientific validity. I've asked him for an independent and dependent variable and he said no thanks. Nathan. You were the one talking to What does conceptual mean? Right, you're going to get this question, you're going to answer it, or I'm going to kick no, you out. No, thanks. I no thanks. You. No thanks. So the question on the table yesterday, <laughs> given that you declared He's that we fine. have a force, was what's conceptual mean? Uh-huh. I'm sure it doesn't mean aha. Uh -huh. What's, Nathan, what's concept? Um, what does conceptual mean? We, we're talking about the fact that we observe different weights the farther you get away from the north. No, I've heard your stupid shitty claim that you said was scientific, and that's what you have to do if you adhere to the scientific method. And I asked you specifically for your independent and dependent variable, not to piss the stupid shit non-scientific claim in our face for a second time! Rotation. <laughs> You think location is an independent variable? No, I didn't say that. Where's John now? But that was a nice try. I think he's just trolling you now. I'm going to kick him out in a no, minute. No, I'm not. I'm simply <laughs> sticking to my... You said... Everything's too complex. You said that's what you do in the scientific method. Those were your words. Now I want an independent and dependent variable for this claim to be an adherence to the scientific method example, a.k.a. bullshit, that you have spewed in our faces twice. No, not really. No, not really. Bye-bye. You're not welcome here anymore, you stupid fundy dick. When it comes to you actually providing proof for anything you claim, you say no thank you. When it comes to me pointing out that you're bending conceptual mediums to give rise to forces, and I ask you to find what conceptual means, you say no thank you. You are not welcome here. The reason we get pissed off is because we're winning this argument, and all you've got when we pull apart your claims is no thank you. <laughs> but I think this is the same guy that said complex fallacy or something last week, I think. The week before. The guy's an idiot. Yeah, that's a uh, reverse reification yep. guy. <laughs> yeah, when it gets to the nub of his claim being absolutely demolished, he says no thank you when we want him to make the point that demolishes his own claim. Because he doesn't like us toying with him. 
yeah, pointing out the stupidity of his own claims, he'd rather just say, no, no, I'd rather just reassert it three more times. No, thank you. No, no. Proof of my claim. No, no, no. I'm not going to give you any cowbell, but I'll piss it in your face four more times. The claim, that is. Not any proof or validity. Well, this guy actually claimed he could see Earth's curvature from an airplane if it's the same guy we're thinking about. It's a fundy, is a zealot. He asked us earlier, what? projecting all over us. Why is it that global... Shouldn't you guys go away and try and have a conversation without arguing? Oh, well, shouldn't you try not talking over the demolition of your fundamentalist religious belief in a sphere every time you come here? I think so. Any evidence of the scientific variety for gravity? Gravity? No. What? What? Nope. No. no. They can't even describe it. Yeah, that's that's what I was... Do you know what? You took the words right out of my mouth. Ball earthers cannot give a consistent definition for what even is gravity. How can you expect anybody to prove gravity when they can't even define it? It seems untenable to me. Yeah, is it an effect or is it a force or what is it? Is it a manifestation? Nobody knows. No, no, it's, it's not that nobody knows. It's that it's not there and they can't tell us it's not there. But they want us to make us think it's there by talking about it all the time. Well, let's let's just point out that let's not. It's the claim now is not that they can't prove gravity. It's that they can only talk about it to reify that it's a thing. The more they talk about it, the more real it appears. But really, they can't even de um, define it, let alone prove it. Um, it's it's whatever it needs to be, when whenever and however it needs to be. It does what it needs to do. <laughs> you know, it makes things <laughs> orbit. It makes things pull. You know, it makes the, it makes everything happen. It pulls planets together with rocks and stuff. It's great. Unicorn fast. Awesome. Well, you Do know remember... what was really funny? Do you know what was really funny? Um, I had a, a troll in my comments, and he gave me a link to a guy that had uh, tried to address the relative density disequilibrium claim. And he'd done a dedicated video to it, so I watched it. And I realized that this is worth a response. Um, he didn't have that many subs, but the level of trolling in his video was really high because he'd applied lots of mathematics um, to try, basically to try and bamboozle anybody that's kind of like 50-50 on this into thinking his argument was totally credible. However, it was based on logically fallacious reasoning on numerous counts, which I demonstrated in the video. But what was really interesting was that he made the claim in the video that if something has a value of zero or less than zero, that makes that takes it into the imaginary area, you know, like the it's not real scenario, um, like imaginary world. Um, and he was distinguishing the mathematics from real real world because we all know that if you've got if you've only got two ice creams, you can't take five ice creams off. Well, that's the point he was making. The minute it goes into a negative value, it's not real world and it's imaginary. And immediately I thought, you mean like Einstein's mathematical concept that we call gravitation and the bending of space time? You mean like that? The, the imaginary world and i just found the hypocrisy amazing and it's just bad that they'll use the uh, the imaginary world of like negative numbers when it suits them but when it when it when it doesn't suit them and they think that it applies against us they'll they'll quickly they'll quickly flip that off and say that it's imaginary and it's like you don't realize that the whole concept of gravitation according to albert einstein is imaginary none of it's real and the big bang well, we cover this on Bullbusters on saturday right they divide by zero and come up with infinity. Yeah. <laughs> Contradiction. Well, it was you, Anthony, who rattled uh, fight the flat earth to get Mooser on, and Mooser said it. It's magical. Yeah. That's all they I got. It's magical. They can't explain it because the earth is not spinning. If it was spinning, oh, oh, they, you'd be they, able to prove it. But they, they can't explain be, it. No, no, what I'm trying to say is this, that they are resorting to a word called magic. Why? The thing is, I've been having a back and forth with um, a lecturer from MIT. Uh, I'm not going to say his name for the moment, um, but he's a, a currently in practice teaching MIT professor, teaching physics and his specialties, uh, Einstein in gravitation, uh, general relativity, right? And I've got to the point in the conversation on gravity where I'm asking him, what is it that makes uh, Newton's apple initially start to move? Obviously, the cord snaps that old, or the stalk snaps that's holding the apple to the tree. 
But what is it that makes it start to move initially? Not the bit where it's moving and it follows a curved path trajectory or whatever, but the initial acceleration from, from stationary. What is that that makes it move? And he stopped talking to me. But what I've noticed is that there's a massive um, there's a massive resistance or reluctance to even consider the possibility that the object's mass is just greater than the medium it's in. Now, you can't answer me for what force is making this object move, because obviously, according to Newton's um, physics and Newton's laws of motion, uh, an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by a force, hence the phrase F equals MA. So if the apple starts to move by Newton's maths or Newton's laws of motion, there must be a force making it move. So I'm asking him to demonstrate to me which force is it, which force is making the apple move when we know that Einstein's is mathematical. And there is no answer. And he stopped talking to me now. He thinks I'm a troll. He thinks I'm winding him up. Uh, he doesn't realize he's going to feature in my upcoming video on gravity is insanity um, because this is nonsense. The explanation is that the apple starts to move just because it's more heavy than the medium it's in. But he can't have that. I mean, I, I was able to successfully demonstrate that if I had an egg that was suspended in a solution where it was no longer moving up nor down and it was neutrally buoyant, we'll use the phrase because everyone understands what it means. I made it move just by changing the density of the medium, right? And I demonstrated that that change in density did cause movement. That doesn't seem to want to pass his lips. And I'm just wondering why is there not only an avoidance to reference this, this thing that does make things move, but the insistence on it still being gravity, even though it's a mathematical construct that bends the, the fabric of space-time and can't cause anything. Ridiculous. I think that they, they don't want to say that Newton was wrong, or he might have been wrong. They don't okay. want to say what, sorry. Ego gets in the way. Who's drilling? Somebody in the that? background with a tape gun's loud as hell there, chocolate. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> Someone posted up that I think it was you, Anthony, that Einstein never did any scientific method uh, at all. It was a thought experiment. It was just yeah. math and it was in yeah, his mind. Yeah, it was mind. just thought experiment, yeah. It's a mathematical construct. It doesn't exist. It's a mathematical construct that is numerically represented, right? It doesn't have any real-world application. That's the, been the criticism of, of Einstein from day one. So that that be, that is where they lie in their problems. So they can't prove it through the scientific method so they you take them and ask the right questions like you do and then they have to shut up but the average guy doesn't know how to do that well i, I was yeah. saying before that maybe it's just that they don't want to accept that maybe Newton was wrong maybe it's you don't maybe you don't need to force to have acceleration it, it's the only way that if, the universe if you if you got if you got that edge to move without applying some type of force all you do is change the density of the medium i don't know is that a force or not that's the question yes well yes it is it is a force in the sense that something does push it but it's not a force because it lacks the interaction part of force well it's not like gravity is supposedly suggesting a unified field of force that is just present that's not yeah, reasonable, but, but force definitely does come into play, visibly, measurably so. Yeah, but look at the definition of force, so it requires an interaction, not just well, a push or a pull. It requires something to interact with something, a physical interaction, right? That's right. So one piece of material of a certain density interacts with the other that is of a difference, and the difference is the cause. So what made the egg move then? If there's, it, What is the force? The force is what manifests when it starts to move. You change the medium. Yeah, force. The, medium. The, salt, the salt interacting with the water, changing the density, moving the egg. Yeah. Yeah, it's all relative. Yeah, but it lacks an interaction, though. No. No, it doesn't. Yeah, there is interaction. You put the salt in the water, right? That itself changed the medium. It changed the density of the water. Yep. Which, in turn, moved the egg. I think there's a valid criticism that it doesn't have the interaction required to satisfy the definition of force, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that it's moot. I'm saying it's worthy discussion. But what I am saying is that we can make things move without touching it, or if we are touching it, it's arguable which what's touching it to make it move, whether it being pressure or being some other force. I mean, at the end of the day, Newton's apple can be made to move without a force, 
and we demonstrate that or is it a force it's to do with no, the, the definition no, of force just assumed to be that's the whole point of gravity it's just assumed to be there at all times and they that is contra that contradicts everything because yeah, but force the sort of went, oh, is uh, either the there or it is not because gravity just actually just a uh, still hypothetical it's not in theory stage they got to have it for the heliocentric model. Gosh, it's so simple. If the Earth is not spinning, it's not round. Uh, right, but don't forget, though, the egg went up, right? Not down. Yeah, that, that's just countermanded with the buoyancy counter effect of gravity, if you insist on explaining everything that way. Yeah, but if gra the buoyancy counter effect of gravity, if gravity is not a force, then there can't be a buoyant force going the opposite way. Yeah, but in it's this case, you would have to presuppose that it is in order to explain it. And when you do, it's not that hard to model everything out, really. Yeah, but it was still stuck at if F equals MA and the, apple, and the egg moved, then there must be a force, right? But if it were gravity, then it must be the buoyant force because gravity's it, buoyancy is dependent well, on gravity, but gravity's uh, not a force. Uh, so it unless depends on how you're gonna unless approach somebody it. was wrong and we don't no. require a force no, to move things. Listen, maybe, it's very maybe simple. Just, uh, when Newton did, did these things, he simply just said, look, you just got to accept this in order for the system to work. That's it. Well said. That's it. Well, that still doesn't really explain what makes the egg move. Don't worry about the egg. Is the earth spinning or not? <laughs> um, That's why they brought earth, it up. That's why they even, it's, it's like Arwen is, said, they needed something and he made it up. Yeah, what came first, the chicken or the egg? God knows. The chicken, of course. I just hear a rooster in the background just now, too. Yeah, I did. That's what I heard too. Uh, <laughs> I was yeah, really that, was, that was great timing. <laughs> okay, then. Any, Any evidence, evidence of a self perpetuating molten iron core at the center of a presupposed spherical Earth? Nah. Discord, we're talking to you. No. Nah. Nothing. Uh, no, there's no evidence of molten iron core. Paul Voigt claims he's got evidence of a molten iron core, but he won't show it to us because he says that we're not intelligent enough to understand it. Sounds a bit like the Emperor's new clothes to me. Or he's are just lying. Say, are you saying he's avoiding it? Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. That's very good. Very good. Thank Any evidence? Early. Give me time. The evidence you can have <laughs> gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon. Absolutely no. not. Yeah, ballers don't like that, um, the necessary antecedent point. When you remind them that the cause, I mean, this is another way to word that same question. Um, what is the cause of gas pressure? If you go to Google and type in what is the cause of gas pressure, it'll come back with walls of the container. So it's like, well, we have gas pressure, so... Where is that container? And they say, well, isn't that for you to prove? I was like, no, no, no. It's the necessary antecedent. We accept that there's gas pressure, but where is it coming from? And what's well, gravity? <laughs> Gravity's not a force, though, is it? So it can't be, can't be being caused by gravity. And even if it was, we know that gravity, um, well, rather, we know that the causation of gas pressure is the walls of the container. So we have to be contained because we have gas pressure, according to their narrative. But even if... As Nathan said, and maybe you can clean up what I'm trying to say, Nathan, you could even give him that argument, it still wouldn't affect the gas. Entropy takes effect always. Right. Yeah, they can claim that they're, without any crappy cartoon references, where are they going to get a decent citation that says that gravity is holding gas on when it doesn't? That's not a principle you'll find in physics backed up with any sort of decent citation. Even if it was true, it's 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 not like I say. Even if gravity was real, it's not overcoming entropy. Since they admit that the atmosphere extends past the moon, they're kind of helping our argument more with that because they're admitting to entropy. 
It's kind of silly not to admit to it, wouldn't it? I say. Talking about laws of nature. And here's okay. another thing. If it's extending past the moon, shouldn't the moon absorb all that gas molecules or whatever? <laughs> I, don't, I don't really follow, but... Yeah, sure. I think... what, I, what I want to know is those gas molecules that are still out there, right? Is So what's holding those molecules out there? Is it Earth's gravity or is it the moon's gravity? No, it's the combined... Uh... Oh, they combine forces like the yeah. Wonder Twins? <laughs> no, 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 but it's, look, it's, it's, a, it's the warping of space-time. So you see it like a big trampoline, and so there's two big balls on the trampoline. So there's <laughs> a little bit of warping in how gravity is. And... Right, two big balls, yeah. Yeah, they've got a... <laughs> so, so 10 they've, they've to the minus really... 7. See, I totally get it. They've got a really so... big issue. Can you all hear me? Yeah, they've got a really big issue with gas pressure because now... They can't even solve, you know, three-body gravitation or two-body or whatever it is. I mean, more than two or three or four, it all goes into, you know, approximations and estimations, and you need supercomputers and all this. So now how are they going to not only account for the different layers, which are all being, you know, affected by gravity of various different bodies, and what about all the, besides the layers, there are all these gas particles as well of different weights, of different uh, chemical make up hydrogen or oxygen or carbon dioxide or whatever, I think they're going to be really stuck on that because you've got all these interactions that basically take that end body problem to infinity. Then you got the other problem with the moon, right? So the moon can affect uh, uh, supposedly the, the Earth's water to affect tides, but it doesn't affect <laughs> any, any of the gas. The, the sun's oh, massive gravitation yeah. that ha that allows comets to go out out of the solar system and come <laughs> back in 86 years later, but that, that doesn't affect any of the gas on Earth. Come on, it's nonsense. Yeah, but they can always it. drop that story, though. They could well, always I, drop it, just like Coriolis nonsense. Well, they haven't dropped it yet. It. So <laughs> why do you, just why, why do you think why do you think they went to time? What? Why do you think they went well, they to what? Why do you think they went to the official space time? What are they saying by time? Are they saying time? Entropy doesn't affect time? Is that what they're trying to say? No, they simply just <laughs> put it, they put time on another dimensional scale. So it's like, a, it's right. like 3D time modeling. Time and entropy are proportional anyway, so. I agree. I agree. That's what I'm saying. They, they move from gases and saying entropy, something can't do or can do to gases. And they say, oh, by the way, it's not mass attracting mass. It's, it's space time in the fourth yeah. dimension. It's total nonsense because, hey, you can definitely model. You make, can make a model about 3D space and time and then work with that. But to then make a claim that that conceptualization is the actual origin of a physical real life thing. Now that is absurd. Well, no, that's a reification fallacy. Speaking of reification, this guy that tried to debunk me last night, he created his own model to explain the egg moving, told, told me that it didn't match reality and then used his own failing model to debunk my claim that relative density was the cause completely ignoring that the independent variable that was manipulated did make some something move, but he claimed his model failed to match reality. Therefore I was debunked. I didn't make a model. He made a model. <laughs> so basically he debunked his own model, but then credited it to me down wow. to a bit of a uh, fake science. It's called a straw man fallacy. Yep. Hmm. Any evidence for the distance of the sun? What is the sun? No, nobody's running no tape measures up to it. They just assume an R value and then apply Kepler's no. third law. No apparent distance. Apparent, yeah. They've got an apparent distance. But what's that mean? Not actual. Yeah, I want to see someone go to the sun. Well, you won't burn up if you go to the sun. It's just getting there you might get burned up. <laughs> well, I'm just going to approve Jazaconda's comment and read it out. 
Stay with me. It's not. Quote. Gas pressure! End quote. Assholes. The atmosphere is not under gas pressure, you dumb. See you next Tuesdays. Question for Jazz. What is the atmosphere made of, Jazz? Hmm. Is this the it's same made cloud of guy? Magic gas. Sorry, can someone just Google search Atmo and put up the definition? <laughs> yes, Akanda has been infected by the chemo virus. <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Because the atmospheric pressure doesn't have the word container in the definition. They try to avoid gas pressure like the plague and say it's atmospheric. Well, what yeah, does course. the atmosphere made of? Is it gas, maybe? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, these it's like when they're, they're, they're trying to find it's just it. the same as when they have gravimeters. They have these things called gravimeters that are basically numbers on a you have like an X, Y, Z axis number and the numbers. Now, some people interpret these gravimeters based on their name to be, oh, they must be recording gravi gravity then, right? But just, basically, all they show is numbers. But if I called it a unicorn fart machine, then it would indicate that it's measuring unicorn farts. If I said that it was a something, 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 you know, something that leads you into thinking it's something, then it can influence your perception of what it's actually doing. But and this is the, the, fun, the fundamental problem with um, redefining terms because they realize that gas pressure requires a container. So they think, right, let's redefine that word and we'll use a completely different word and we'll make it have the same thing. But it's doublespeak. Did you say gravy meter? Does it measure gravy? My God. Oh. Uh, as far Any as I can minutes? tell, it measures unicorn. They haven't, they haven't <laughs> manipulated anything to prove what it claims it's measuring because it could be measuring electrostatic effects in the atmosphere. It could be magnetism. It could be, could be anything. It could be literally anything. It could be the amount of light that's passing through it. It could be amount Maybe of reflection. Maybe it's just Nucleus. measuring a very small standard scale inside of a vacuum or whatever. And then they're just saying, oh, we're measuring these particles. These particles. It's just a miniature scale. That's it. It only exists in Narnia. That's probably it. <laughs> it only exists in Narnia. They make it up in their make-believe space. Yeah. It's just too small to see, so they can make up whatever. One last one. Any evidence of the radius of the Earth, the R value? No, they just assume it. That's nah, really for that, we might want to go back to the first one and ask where's the curvature first. <laughs> you know, we might need that before we find a radius. So, yeah. Hey, Ranty. Hello, hello. How's it going? Hey, Ranty. Hi, How's everyone. Going I, I, right, caught, Ranty. I caught about, I don't know, two or three minutes at the most of your show with George yesterday. I, so, my apologies for not tuning in tomorrow. I had an after show and whatever running at the same time. But how did you get on? Uh, it was long. I mean, it went on for nearly three hours, I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was interesting. Um, uh, George's idea that we have um, um, a force field um, around the Earth that protects, that that's why we have gas pressure. Wow, he and took he, my and idea. He, and he, used, he literally used the word force field too numerous times. What? Wow, so, he took my idea. That's incredible. Hold on, the we, hold, on. hold on. Carry on, Ranty. <laughs> Hang on, Ranty, who are you talking about? George Nettinger. George. Yeah, George Nettinger. Apparently we have um, an invisible force field around the Earth that, <laughs> that separates the, <laughs> the vacuum of space to the, to the gas pressure. So, yep. Um, yep, he said it. <laughs> it's great. So has he been trolled? Can we claim our first victim of trolling? Can we claim that George has been trolled by Arwen? No. No, it was actually a serious suggestion at the time. <laughs> Sorry, Arwin. So there you go, I... Nathan. That answers your question. How can you have gas pressure without a container? Well, there you go. We've got a force field around us. Is it a dome? I guess new new housekeeping question. Any signs of a force field? Uh, it's just a <laughs> secondary <laughs> gravity <laughs> barrier side effect. I get it. We're going straight into Star Trek now, man. Shields up, all of that shit. <laughs> if George uh, is interested well in, in learning more details about this force field, uh, he's always welcome to ask me. So, what you said has more truth than you realize, Chocolate saying. 
you want to just repeat what you just said? I said we're going straight into the Star Trek with the shields up and all that. Is that what you meant? Yeah. So you're descri- what you're saying is the reality being described by George Nettening is like or akin to science fiction. Well, what we're hopefully highlighting to the audience on this very show and others like it is that what is called science fiction is actually paralleled with pseudoscience as opposed to science. So you could call pseudoscience fiction and the parallel with pseudoscience. So both have hijacked this word science, neither have any validity in that regard. But the actuality about what they're describing is just the science fiction, in quotes, that we are shown at the cinema. That is our worldview that we're put on us. And how we're programmed with it is with science fiction. So our world, our sphere world that we thought we lived on, flying through a vacuum, that's a fairy tale. Just like at the cinema when you go and watch Guardians of the Galaxy or Star Trek, as you used as an example, Star Wars or anything else that's based in that fake world our whole world has been a sci-fi narrative that's why i say there's more parallels than perhaps you realize when he says we've got a force field around us absolutely bloody absurd and william shatner figured this out too when he said uh science fiction and science are the same yeah i heard that yeah he was and he's right well, I always think know. that's the funniest thing, right? William Shatner, uh, well, Captain he, Kirk himself. He's right and he's wrong. <laughs> I just, just want to get this in. Because what they say science is and science fiction are the same. So in reality, pseudoscience and science fiction in this regard, when it comes to astrophysics, are the same. And he's not wrong, but saying science is wrong because you you not you can't compare an adherence to the scientific method, cause and effect relationships, independent and dependent variable with science fiction because the two are so far removed from each other it's untrue. But what is parroted and punted as being science, actually pseudoscience astrophysicists observing and declaring what they see based on twinkly lights in the sky, and science fiction are the same, just for clarity. The body of pseudo science fiction compels you. Yeah, well, well said. Shatner. Exactly, Alwyn. Exactly. Well, couldn't have said it better myself. So, I think we're going to name this. We've got to give it a name, haven't we? So, how about the Atmol field? No, let's call it the Dome field. The Dome field. <laughs> Is that right, George? We've got a Dome field around us. <laughs> you didn't define it yet? George yeah, there's no name given to it. Yeah. Um, I've just done it for oh, him. I've just done it for him. Dome. It's going to be called. I'm going to have to go on to Jose's uh, again. Don't let this get lost. I w- it is now called George Netanyuk's Dome Field. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. You know, like we've got the Van Allen radiation belts. We've now got the George Netanyuk Dome Field. <sighs> that was attributed to you too by Arwin. No, no, no. He broke with the concept. He made it much more sloppy. He should have just gone with a secondary gravity barrier. I've I've even laid this out like half a year ago on the show. And everybody so does, was, of course, ignoring it. So does, that, does this conclude housekeeping? Yeah, that was the last question. Yay. What? Well, you got something no. to present? <laughs> Anybody got R? Yeah, we've done our. Ah. There ought to be none here. We're still waiting for Spurs to respond to Flatsoid's uh, beautiful presentation, which we could air now, I think, if Nathan wants to. Sorry, were you talking to me? Yeah. Uh, Flatsoid put up a video of water being separated from an air compressor. And Spurs said last Friday that if you can show me air pressure without water i'll drop the subject from now on so let's see if he will oh god you want to invoke this garbage look we, we already know this why do you why do you want to why is it so important to get the person asserting the nonsense to concede oh yeah no, you're wrong i fell victim because, to this on this because show. if he doesn't concede he'll be back on it tomorrow yeah, but you're actually trying to get him to come on to concede right well you know he'll just he come said, on and argue the toss said, and hand wave it 
Well, he said, if you prove it, I'll stop. And Flatjoy proved it. Well, when's the last time he's actually answered a question straight? Because as far as I can remember now in the last few weeks, he's been a total red herring every single time. So, <clears throat> Well, I showed it to him, so it's up to him to accept or not. Well, well done there, Flatjoy. Thanks for taking the time. I was talking to Right the Hand today and we were brainstorming and uh, we were trying to figure this out with uh, what's, what Spurs is trying to say. And I think the main conclusion that we've come to is that we're, tr we're trying to see it from the global side, which is that pressure is caused by uh, weight, uh, i.e. gravity. But what happens if it's pressure is just caused by volume and that volume is dictated by the temperature? So the molecules don't behave the way we think they do, which is zipping around everywhere, but they actually just behave as in like expanding and contracting, just like a balloon would uh, expand and contract and take up more more volume in a given area. They don't have to be being pulled down. They just need to be like sardines in a can. You know, you put more sardines in when it's warmer and less sardines get taken out when it's cooler. But there's no force pulling them down to create weight but you would still get pressure, but it would be pressure from the sides more than pressure being pulled down. Does that make sense? Yeah, I saw his video today. Whose video was that, sorry? Right the hand. Oh, has he Trying done to... Yeah, explained it. Okay, yeah, well, we were talking about it a couple of hours ago, so I don't know if he's released it in the last couple of hours, but... So, like we're so living this... in jello. So how does that work in a dynamic system when every day when the sun comes up, life is renewing itself and creating oxygen and everything else? Well, you know, I mean, there's a lot of answers still to, to be had. You know, we're just still brainstorming this. I mean, something that occurred to me was that when you get high pressure, um, you tend to get high clouds. So high cl the clouds are much higher when you've got a high pressure. And when you've got low pressure and it's cooler and it's more chance of rain, you've got lower clouds. Now, that would fit perfectly well with what I've just explained, which is that these molecules expand under heat. So they would create a, they would fill up a bigger volume, which would automatically push the clouds higher. So it, it all sort of falls in. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more work to do on this. But if it's that if that's the case and we can explain that the molecules don't behave the way we think they do, they're dictated to by temperature, but they fill a volume rather than are attributed to weight, which would get rid of gravity so when adam meekin explained so precisely that the nitrogen won't freeze until it's minus 200 and above but the oxygen uh uh levels freeze at you know at the levels much lower like minus 30 or whatever he said uh what do you make of that well i make that there's a lot of progress still to be done in, in this subject. I don't think it's just as clear cut as what we are, what we are told. I think there's a more there's more to this. And uh, so then, unless we ask questions and I just try and brainstorm things. I just plug that show. So it's called Flat Earth Debate 926 Premier and Cut. And Adam Meekin did an absolutely outstanding job. Patience of a saint. He did it with Spurs here. Anyway, check it out. It's at the end of 926 which is premier and cut that's the name of the show flat earth debate premier and cut 926 is the number it's right at the end of that show yeah because spurs is denying the existence of gas pressure um but i think he's thinking of it as in pressure as in being forced with gravity but if you just use it as an expanse of the molecule under under heat it gets a bit, bit fatter you know each molecule gets a bit fatter uh, it creates a little more pressure um, and if you imagine we're surrounded by all these little bubbles, you know, they're just getting bigger and smaller due to temperature, but they're not actually being pulled down toward by gravity. Um, yeah, I mean, density, buoyancy, heat can all create a pressure gradient. Uh, we don't need gravity for that. So when we have an air compressor on this earth and it's empty, and then we turn it on and it starts pressurizing. It wouldn't do that without the container. We already know that. Right. So you can't have gas pressure. What if you brought in a, it, a container, in container into it? I've not said anything about a container. I've literally know, just but, explaining how. I know. What I know, we but can you brought, gravi you brought gravity into it. 
yeah, removal of gravity, the complete removal of gravity that we won't need. Gravity doesn't need to be there. And we can demonstrate that by just, you know, having to think about how things behave differently. I mean, there's a big but they don't, thing going on in it, science. About it wasn't needed to begin not, with. You're saying the removal. Of, it wasn't needed to begin with. Hmm. But we, yeah, but we still need to have the answers. Is there's no point in you know stopping and just saying okay we know everything because I'm not saying we, we do. Don't. I'm just saying that gravity in this regard, when it comes to gas law, provided no answers, wasn't intrinsic, isn't required, didn't overcome any of the arguments in regards to gas law, gas pressure, gas needing a container to press upon to have pressure. N none of those things are addressed in any way, shape, or form by gravity. But you remember those citations that I sent you? You, I, I came on before and talked about how. Um, the globe discuss how um, atmospheric pressure is caused by weight or and uh, gravity and yeah. you said you need the citations and I sent you a bunch of them there's at least half a yes. dozen or so on the first page of Google so that's the the ex explanation yeah, for why we have gas pressure sure. and their explanation in that regard falls apart because they describe the weight of the gas above pressing down on the gas below mm -hmm. well that falls apart when you get to the vacuum doesn't it Right, so the also, citations are there, but they don't make any sense on account of the fact that the entropy still would take a hold in their example, which is precisely the point. Gravity yeah, to earth is seriously saying, flat. Gravity D bitch <laughs> will infect you W globe tits. Oh, God, man. I, I really struggle on the best of days. Global actors. Can someone else read Earth is Seriously, fl seriously Flat? Gravity, D, B, H, it will infected you with globali global titus. Globalitis, I see. No, global titus. I'm going to try that once more. <laughs> Gravity, D, B, H, it will infect you with globalitis. Yeah, no, global titus, there's two T's there. Yeah, I think that just could be a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> he's so, so keen to get everything right. spelled correctly. Yeah. Thank you for the super Gravity chat. That that seriously flat. So essentially, we're just having a sniff around. We're seeing what's what's around there. You know, we don't. We, you know, you know, we just don't. You don't just stop. You know, you have a sniff around. You see what works, what doesn't work. You know, I mean, obviously, we could talk about all kinds of different things, but I'm just trying to get a little more concise as to about how we're trying to understand it from from one side and uh, this might take another few months before we even have a more concise answer to answer your questions there, Nathan. Fair enough. You know? There we go. View it at every angle? Uh, not yet. <laughs> this has only been going about a month, so, you know, there's, a, there's only a few of us been talking about it. More people are, but, you know, the more we think about it, the more tests we do, we might have some answers. Who knows? You know, I mean, there's a whole world of lies that we need to, to decipher, you know, uh, but just to say that we have all the answers right now, because we don't, um, we're still learning. You know, we've got a lot of catching up to do. Fair enough. Let me know if you find the dome field. Yeah, agreed. The dome field. <laughs> <laughs> the dome field. It was, it was, it was um, yeah, when he said it, I thought, hmm, that's the first time I've heard that. Uh, a force field around the earth. And uh, Sleeping Warrior's already covered his response video that I also caught a couple of minutes of. Covered flat side. Anybody else got any material out? Sorry, what did you just say then? I heard my name, Nathan. What did you say? He's already, you, you covered it at the first third of the show. You did a response video yesterday, and I was just saying, Ranty's just covered his videos that he's got out recently. You've covered your videos that you've got out recently. Well, yeah, I mean, the the main point in my video is that, um, and I, I want to talk about this because I think it's Michael really worth it. pointing out to the people that are new to the topic that we've because we've not talked about this for a while. Um, if you're going to make a model that isn't actually doing science, making a model is not part of scientific method. A hypothesis is part of scientific method. Identifying your dependent and your independent variables is part of scientific method. But making a model isn't part of scientific method. It may have uses, it may be useful to predict patterns perhaps, correlations even, but not causes. Models don't do cause. Science is about the cause and effect relationship. It's not about correlations. I Let's just be really clear, models don't, they're not part of scientific method. Nathan, do you agree? Well, ask, ask me a few questions in that regard. So, 
I've got a model, and the measurement's been made for the level of unicorn farts that interact with mass. And okay. if you move from the North Pole with mass, it will decrease because of the amount of unicorn farts that are in the atmosphere. And that's because that's adhering to the scientific method. All right. So if you move south, it, it, it changes the amount of molecules, right? Just ask me for my IDB and DV, please. Oh, okay. Well, should we start with the observed phenomena first? Yeah, sure. But what, what what's the observed phenomena in this uh, for this model for its creation to be made? My assumption of unicorn farts and then some nonsense story that I make up. Okay, so the independent variable, the cause for the nonsense story. Definitely not unicorn farts. Even though those are the thing I'm trying to prove, we're going to presuppose they're real, and I'll just decide that um, location is the independent variable. Did you put unicorn farts in your mathematics to prove that unicorn, unicorn farts exist? I'm going to presuppose they exist, because they do. Oh, right. Okay. So we've got, we've got your independent variable, which was location. Correct. And we've got a little bit of maths that calculates for unicorn farts. Uh, what about the dependent variable? And presupposes that they're real. <laughs> yeah. Jokes uh, what, about, what, about the, what about the dependent variable? All, all unicorn jokes here in Fantasyland. Stroking each other's egos. Fantasy debunking land, the world. What was, it, what was it you said yesterday, Dawn? What about refraction? Weren't mm. you trying to sell us on the idea of hologrammatic yeah. uh, clock towers yesterday because of your reification of a sphere model? I seem to think you yeah, were. I'm not what's really that you say, fantasies? But obviously, it hey, does Nathan. explain stuff coming up over the curve. <laughs> hey, Nathan, can I make a Go small on, prediction about your theory? Explain it, yeah. I mean, you like guys are talking about force. It's a known phenomenon. Uh, okay. Who is it? Just I heard somebody that was referencing George Natanyuk. Please repeat whatever it was you just said, whoever that was. Shields up. That 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 bit that I was uh, is that talking about joke? just now. That um... the shield. What did George say about shield? He said we got a force field, Dawn, around Earth what, to what? maintain the gas pressure. Did... Oh. Oh yeah. Did yeah. He say, oh. Did he say gravity acts like a force field. Well, I don't care. Yeah. Use the word is it, force isn't field. that funny? I mean, no, just no, no, as funny as what you like think a, we're talking uh, about. Not if you said acts like a force field, because that's literally how it acts. Acts like. What acts oh, like? Oh, so it's not, it's not funny force. anymore. Now you just have to explain how it oh, if, if he said there's a literal force field, then that's a bit misguided. But if he said gravity acts like a force field. Well, what is it? What, what is it? What is it? If it's not a force field, like he's saying... The sentence, gravity acts like a force field around Earth, is a totally normal It's sentence. not a force not field, but joke. you can think of it as a force field. That's, that's what most people believe and understand. It manifests itself as a force field. I know it's a joke to you guys, but you're like five people. The rest of the world carries wow. on. Well, it is a joke. The bending of a conceptual to you, yeah. But I'm telling you now, space it's not really time. funny to me. I don't know why you guys find it funny either. Yeah, I'm just about to tell you. Because this is your religion. Your religion says that the bending of a concept, medium that doesn't exist, that's only existing in somebody who's just making it up in their brain, yeah? The bending of that gives rise to yeah. a force that's not actually a force but can be thought of a force that gives rise to a force field that acts like a container. Sorry, what were you saying about no, that's unicorns not how again? They work, <laughs> that's I mean, not how it works. Saying. That's not how they word it. No, no, yeah, you're damn straight. That's not how it works. Yeah, there is no force of gravity because it's the bending of a concept that was made up by Einstein. So, no, it doesn't give rise to any force and it definitely doesn't terrible. make any force fields. Yeah, gravity acts like a force field. That's, that's <laughs> gravity yeah. acts like a... No, it's not a force, Dawn. It's a concept... It's not, it's not, no, it it's the bending of a concept like doesn't do anything. A force field. Right. It doesn't do anything. It's the bending of a concept. Sorry, what? Have you created well, a force field the before? Theory, not a scientific theory. I know you don't believe in Mystic the theory, Meg theory. The theory. Mystic Meg theory, maybe. Certainly not scientific. Mm, I don't Have think you it's created that a force field before? You got. You, you guys always jump to explaining what it is. I will never, ever, Dawn, hear you say, how the fuck, sorry for the thing, how does it, how does it act as a force field? Um, how? Yeah, I how does, think God just designed, designed mass to collect more mass slowly, basically. That's what I think. 
like people go towards other people to be together. Oh God! Socialized. But meth doesn't attract. I don't meth. know exactly how it does it. I don't know. It's one of the no, laws that, of the universe. No. Stuff goes towards stuff. So is it? We witness it every day, don't we? Stuff going towards stuff. It's definitely not relative density. I can tell you that. Hey Don, let me ask you a question, if you don't mind. Are you okay. a fan of Star Trek by any chance? No, Star Wars, not never Star Trek, really. Yeah, okay. that, that, that's great. Star Wars, that's fine. <laughs> so, you accept that Star Wars is not true, right? It's make believe. It's, it's not real, right? Can you back off your mic I just a bit? Think smudge. Based, I think science fiction is based on science, and it is a vision of the future. One vision of the future, yeah. Can you back off your mic just a bit, please, Anthony? Thanks. But it's not real, though. That's my point. You I think accept I heard, it's not real. I, uh, oh, no, right now. I think I heard <laughs> Arwen uh, contest your... <laughs> Great interruption. What are you Sorry. into, Arwen? You into Star Wars? Breaking up, my friend. Shout out to Five Angels for the super chat. A force field uh, that can I'm contain pressure. Ugh, God. Star Wars. A force field that can contain pressure. Oh, now it's gone off my screen. <laughs> Bloody interruptions. <laughs> Shout out to Five Angels. A force field that can contain pressure but allow a cardboard lunar lander to pass through. Lol. Yeah. Right on. Don't forget tinfoil. Okay, so can I just get back to my question? Yes. So, Dawn, um, you accept that it's not real, yeah? Yeah, I know it's fiction now, most of it. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make you angry because it's not real, does it? Doesn't what? It doesn't make you angry because it's not real, right? No, of course not. I like, I like fiction. So, if you don't believe that Flat Earth's true, why does it make you angry? Well, I, it makes me frustrated when I hear people lie to themselves and to other people. But it doesn't really make me angry anymore. It did at the beginning. You seem to be angry on my te my post recently. You got, you're doing a lot of the uh, accusation of lying posts. Yeah, that is, is that that's that seems I, intentional. I feel like you as a person, is that your, you your videos have been annoying me because they keep popping up in my notifications. I watch them because it's easy to watch two minutes long, and it's well, just what it's would got the like motivation for five lies, on five lies lying in two minutes. People. And I know like that. you know that that's not right but you're still saying it in your videos, and that makes me frustrated, so I often leave triggered comments. Yeah, why? When you say that, when why you say that... Why would they? Hang on a sec. Let me, let's just bear with me. When you say that's not right, when you say I know, you know that I know that that's not right, what is it specifically you're referring to that you think that I know that it's not right? Massive shout-out to Tina Baker for hitting the super chat. It says, have a great day. Thanks for all your hard work. Really appreciate your support, Tina Baker. And thank you for supporting me on Patreon. And with that, I'll say, if you want to watch the continuation of this conversation, then you're going to need to subscribe to the Nathan Oakley channel. So hit the info box and subscribe there, where the after show and uncut shows take place a few hours after these live streams finish. Massive, huge, enormous thank you to all of you who tuned in live on Nathan Oakley 1980 for smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. A massive thank you to all of today's panel for making this live show possible. Stay tuned if you're watching on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! On some days, you, you seem... You're cutting out a bit, dude. Um, what do you think I'm lying about, Dawn? Um... Everything to do with relative density. So when you talk about relative density, the whole rhetoric is a lie, which means 90% of what you say on it is a lie. But a few truths come out when, when you say the basic things about how it works. Well, Don, Don, do you Your realize whole... that um, when the egg oh, was am suspended? I lying as well, then? No, you're just going on about the egg is more lies to me. I, I can't explain it. It's, it's just. Yeah, I, that's, I think that, that, if you can't hard. explain it, that, mean, that means it can't be a lie because you need to itemize where the dishonesty is. It's better than me calling you a retard. I'm I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you're. How, you how is relative density a lie, Don? 
Yeah, let, uh, let's just go back to the, to the crescendo of the point, Dawn. If, when the egg was suspended, Dawn, when the egg was suspended and nothing was, it wasn't moving, it was neither at the top nor at the bottom, it was in the middle. And then I added that salt to it, right? Do you agree that that changed the mass that went into the liquid? I don't want to get into the specifics of it, dude. It's just, yeah, that's because like, you're calling me a liar, you, you though, and I'm wondering up. why you think you're I'm lying when I me. demonstrated you're why the egg moved. Me. What he's doing is he's projecting his stupidity onto you. So he's saying it's better than calling you a retard. What he means is I don't understand, and <laughs> therefore I want to call you a retard. No, I'm calling him a liar. Yeah. Well, D Don, that that looks real disingenuous, bro. Because you're calling him a liar, but then when he wants to talk about it, now you're like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. That sounds like okay, bullshit well, to me, bro. Listen, if you're gonna call him a liar, tell him why I he's think a liar. What well, my point is. Relative density is a scalar, and he's telling people it's not. He's telling people it's a force, and it can make a direction. No, rel relative can't. density is not a scalar. It's a vector. 90 degrees. Your whole density tower is oriented 90 degrees to Earth, not because of the relative density in it, because of something else. It is the... You know that. You know that, Riley. It... The reason why it's about. orientated that way is because of the density. You already told me in DMs that relative density doesn't explain a direction. It's just the way it is. You don't no, 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 that's, like that's that, not you? right. Just quote no, my words I've exactly. What I said was the, the magnitude. The magnitude come... to me saying that, but now you're not saying that to people on YouTube in your videos or in the comments. Go on, listen. Listen. The definition of vector requires a direction and a magnitude. The direction comes from the density differences between all the all the differences, all the different no, like fluids or gravity. objects or whatever. But the magnitude comes from oh, the differential between the two. Hold on. Can you back off your mic just a little bit, Anthony? And he's not going to let you give a concise explanation. He's going to rumpus you and say gravity over the top of you. Well, we've been over it together, one on one, and I yeah, don't well, believe let, any of let it. Let him explain it, because I haven't been privy to that conversation. And all I can hear is you interrupting him, saying gravity and liar and things like that. So let me let me just clarify. Relative density gives you the direction, but the magnitude comes from the disparity between the two, the difference or the differential between the two issues in question the density of the mediums or the fluids in question that's the magnitude and that's where the direction the vector is satisfied there's two parts to a vector direction magnitude it has both it's, but it's not a vector it's a scalar you can google this it isn't that's wrong the, the scalar is density of one object on its own in isolation when you have two of them next to each other then it's All relative the that's that's not, it's no longer a scalar again he won't let you give a concise reply He'll interrupt you halfway through. You're right. This is unbelievable. And I think you're smarter than that. Yeah, he's it. So his interruption was to just say nothing, basically. To well, interrupt. John, what, what well, decided the, the direction the, the egg was going to move in? The density tower is equilibrated because of gravity. You can see that. If you turn it the, oh, sideways, it literally falls all over the floor because of gravity every single time. So does the egg and the water. No, 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 this because the medium is bullshit. in. It debunks it your whole bullshit. You can't make the egg go sideways, can you? Or make the water hole sideways. Yeah. So your relative density is a load of shit. It's crush good. Absolutely. Hold on, Dawn. 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 It's a relation to the shut up. No, you're not. He makes a spews out claim. Then, obviously, that's going to need addressing. But he won't shut up after he's made his claim. You can't make the egg go sideways. That's what your claim is. So you're telling me that if I've got a concrete floor and I pour a bit of water on, the egg won't roll along in the direction of the water as it tries to flow that's sideways. Not. It hasn't even let me come to the end of a single sentence. Because you're misrepresenting the point. You said the egg can't go sideways. I meant he can't do the whole experiment sideways. Look, when you actually fill stuff up, it's not in a tube. And normally, it'll fill horizontally first, before going up uh, parallel, or down. Uh, and he will not shut the fuck up while anybody else talks. He's the dumbest person here, and he will not shut up. You're stupid, Dawn. And when other people talk, what's a vector, Dawn? Describe what a vector is, please. I'm not an expert on these things. I You've just, used the word three good. times. What's I know, I googled, a, I googled it to see if Riley was right or wrong. I found out he was wrong. 
That's what, what is I'm it? Like Dawn. Don't Dawn. Dawn. What Dawn. Dawn. Is, Dawn. You're care. babbling on about what your justification and what Anthony's right or wrong about. I'm going to say it again. You're the dumbest person here. And I want you now well, to tell I'm me what I'm making. One. And you're talking over me continually. Well, I point out, as a fact, you are the dumbest person here. I've asked you what a vector is, and you went, I googled it, and then found out he's wrong. You didn't define what a vector is. We have Clarence, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's your vector, Victor? Surely you can't be serious. I'm always serious. And he doesn't don't know call what these sure. words mean. He hasn't got a clue what he's talking about. He's the dumbest person here, yet he's more than content to call much smarter people than he liars. Yet, I can still realize that you're lying about you don't it, know the subject you don't even know the words you're using but but don no? you haven't pinpointed to anybody how anybody's lying you're just saying liar liar I did, I did, you're not I saying I anything you about saying, it. I, I, I laid it all out dude you heard it all so what are you saying so it's not a vector it's not producing a vector hey anthony don't go anywhere See, there's a long pause because you don't know what that bloody word means. How can you know he's wrong? You don't even know the words you're using. No, just because he believes he's wrong. I think Anthony already left. Oh. They already left. Yeah. yeah. He's left. He's gone. Something Jeez, moving in the oh man. It's, just, it's a scalar, not a vector. So why are you asking me What's what a vector? vector? Why are you asking me about vector? Because you're using that word, you stupid moron. Sorry? Well, you want me to explain Good every call. single word I use to you? Yeah, what, because what's that about? you don't know what the word means, Dodd. That's the point. Okay. You tell me what scalar means now. Couldn't you I'm not using thing? that word, you stupid moron. That's the word I'm using. Yeah, so, so what's that mean then? What talking. does it mean then, it's Dawn? It's a really tough word to Google, though. There's yeah. many I'm asking types you, of dude. I'm asking yeah, you're asking me to define a word that you're using. Yeah. You stupid idiot. I'm not using, which is even more weird. <laughs> You've used the word vector. You don't know what it means. You're saying he's wrong because it's not that, and you don't even know what that is, but Look, you're saying it's Google. wrong. And before I finish my sentence, you're interrupting. Again, the dumbest person here has got the most to say when others more intelligent than he point out that he doesn't even understand the words uh -huh. he's using. <laughs> I haven't come on here to explain to you exactly what the word Yeah, are. you've come here to tell us that the word you've used is a lie and wrong. Yeah, that's precisely what you've come here to do. You've said it's not a vector. You don't know what a vector is! How can you know it's not that right. if you don't know what it is, you stupid fool? I just... because I googled it. Oh, really? And, and right now, now you know to the point that you can yeah. define it? No, yeah. you still don't yeah. understand what the word means, yeah. even though you did a cursory Google search and are now interrupting me, pointing out that that is not having an understanding. That's what happened. A quantity having direction. I used a simple Google search. Yeah, he's now going to tell us about how he looked it up. And at the time, he looked it up and decided Anthony was a liar. And he thinks that's having an understanding. Yeah. And when asked to define the word he says is wrong, he doesn't know what it means. Clearly demonstrating he has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. No, this is not true. No, it's just um, wrong. No. Have you, have you I don't, I don't need wait, to wait. know the words I use. A vector is I can a trajectory say. prediction within a, a time, yeah, within the fourth dimensional. The model. forces of equilibrium. Can we say that? Don, saying you know what it is and you don't know what it is makes you a liar, no? no. Well, he just picked up the sorry, word. It sounded right, cool. Right. And he I didn't Googled get it. it. I trust the other person oh, more. Tired of this. That doesn't make me a liar. That makes Google <laughs> a liar. That makes or, you an idiot. Or Riley, right? <laughs> <laughs> how, how dare you guys expect me to know the definitions of the words that I use? How dare you? I could have Googled it, guys, but I'm, yeah, I don't um, like to take it's like, it's like some antiquiz. Right, so now that you've Googled it, can you tell? Can you finally explain why? I don't give a fuck how, to do a quiz for nonsense. If tough one to Google, he has to Google something more than have vector. Ever, to, just Google vector have you ever in heard math of because that'll get you more in the right direction. I'm presenting it to you. Have you ever heard the saying? Have you ever heard the saying, don't go to a gunfight with a knife? 
And with that, I'm going to say another huge and a massive, enormous thank you to all of you who've tuned in to the Nathan Oakley premiering stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. And again, another massive thank you to all of today's debating panel for making this after show possible. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!